bringing you to great fishing from the North Carolina Outer Banks to the low country of South Carolina. It's the Coastal Carolina Fishing Experience, hosted by Rennie Clark. Another little Spanish. There he is. Another Spanish mackerel. Looking for bonita, but we'll take the Spanish as well. There's some good Spanish out here early in the season here in the Carolinas. We get the big Spanish before the smaller ones come here for the summer. This is a pretty good size one here. Oh yeah, a lot better Spanish there. Pretty fish. catch these fish in a lot of different ways. I'm using jigs right now, three quarter ounce and one ounce uh, metal jigs, but you can catch them on spoons, you can catch them on top water baits at the right time, crank baits, uh, deep diving, stick baits. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can catch these fish. You can catch them jigging like I'm doing now, you can catch them trolling. Um, so I'd rather sight fish and jig for them. Also, we, we do a little bit of fly fishing for them. And that's a lot of fun. But today, mainly what I'll be doing is using a jig. We'll go over several different techniques throughout the day, but for the most part, we'll be throwing spinning reels uh, with jigs attached to them. hooked up on a jig. So that's Spanish. Best thing to do is stick them in a the live well, put the head in there, close them down. Got a lot of water in there. Like that. That way they can't move and can't get blood all over your boat. Take the hook right out and you're back to fishing without having to clean the deck up. Picking up the speed and trigger a bite. You think you're, you think you're uh, reeling fast, and then you pick it up to reel it in, and then he smokes it just like this fish just did. But they are very swift, swift swimming species, and you're not going to crank fast enough to uh, to get it away from them. See that? Close their mouth, close their head in the live well, take the hook out, let him in. You don't have any blood to deal with on your boat. It's an easy way to keep the deck clean and, and keep fishing without having to stop and get blood off your deck. Another good thing is I've got liquid armor protective coatings on this boat. So even if you do get blood or guts on it, at the end of the day, it'll wash right off. 
Uh, sometimes not. Even, you don't even need a brush. Just high pressure water will knock this stuff right off. So that's another tip when you're fishing for nearshore and offshore species. You're going to get your boat deck dirty. So having a good protective coating like liquid armor on your boat is definitely going to make your boat, uh, cleaning your boat up a lot easier at the end of the day. So Because nobody likes cleaning their boat up. We like fishing. We love fishing, but we don't like coming in and having to clean the boat up. So now I've cut my time down from like an hour of cleaning up my boat after a nearshore and offshore trip down to about five minutes, which works for me. Knock them out with that cast. Another species. We saw a lot of bait on the on the uh, screen. And it looks like bonita, but these blues will get mixed in with bonita when we're out here fishing for them. So that's just a little blue fish. Let those go. We got Spanish around. It's definitely better better leave the blue fish alone because blue fish are good eating, but you got to uh, you got to bleed them. You know, I like to bleed them right under their cut them right under their uh, gills and let them bleed out in the salt water then put them on ice. You can actually definitely eat bluefish, but when you got Spanish mackerel out here, why bother? This feels more like a better fish here. Yep, it is. It's nicer bluefish. Definitely not target species, but they're fun to catch on light tackle. Get off of there. You got everything, ripped his lips off. You ever heard of saying, ripped their lips off? Just ripped his lips off. But jigging a bait cast reel like this Shimano Tranks is just awesome to fish with. I mean, you got total control with a bait caster and just a natural jigging motion with this bait caster makes it just even that much easier when you're out here targeting fish on the bottom or casting the, the schooling fish like we've been doing this morning. Already got one on, but I've got a little bit of a tangle. Got another little fish coming up here. Probably another little blue. But you never know. Just like this, this is a Spanish. Thought I had another blue fish, and I jigged up a Spanish. It's just a lot of bait on the bottom. Actually, no, it's another blue fish. I'm wrong. It sure looked like a Spanish when he was down there. It's a lot better blue fish there. So there's a lot of different ways you can target these fish. We've uh, we thrown top water, we've jigged, we've, we've sight fished for these fish, um, and now I'm finding uh, bait balls and actually fish I'm marking on the screen, and they're hitting the bait as it's going down. Like right now, I've already got a fish on. It didn't even get to the bottom. Blue fish. Now we're gonna get back on the Spanish. Another boat coming in. Alright guys, I'm on the Sea Chaser 22 HFC. This is a great dual purpose boat. It's a center console, got an awesome T-top with storage, uh, lean in post, very comfortable boat for the family, but can also do uh, the fishing game as well. We're out here trolling in two to three foot seas and this, this boat handles it with ease. Just like with any other Sea Chaser uh, line of boats, Carolina Skiff is the parent company and they build a quality boat. They have a lot of amenities on this boat. There's a lot of storage, seating. There's seating for four on the back deck. There's seating for two here in the lean-in post. There's also seating up front and uh, 
you've got backrest where two people could lay out up front um, sitting on the front deck. So it's a great layout that kind of does a little bit of everything. And you know, if you're looking for a family boat in that 22 foot range, which is kind of the magic, you know, link for what I like to do. I like 22 foot boats because they're not too bulky. They're easy to handle with one person at the dock. So this is a great option. This boat is pretty quick. It's got a 200 horsepower Suzuki four stroke. It's so quiet that when I got on this boat, I transferred from another boat out here on the ocean and I didn't even know the boat and the motor was running. So if you haven't looked at these boats, go out to Marine Warehouse and take a look. They've got bay boats in the Sea Chaser line as well as offshore boats and also these dual purpose boats like this 22 HFC. So go over and see those guys and, and go sea trial one of these boats if you're in the market for a 22 foot offshore slash bay boat. Uh, this boat is kind of in between. It's not a complete offshore boat. It actually has a lot of bay boat features including a ski pole. So it's a great family boat that you can also take your buddies out and go catch king mackerel with and Spanish mackerel like we're doing today. Uh, we're trolling right now with mackerel tree rigs and clark spoons and we've pulled up quite a few blues and, and some Spanish mackerel today on this boat. And uh, right now we're gonna get back at it guys. So if you hadn't seen these boats, go check them out at Marine Warehouse and give those guys a, a call up there if you want any more information on the Sea Chaser line of boats. All right, guys, I am here at Texas Tackle with the owner, Tex Grissom. We have been out Spanish mackerel fishing today. We had a good day sight casting to break in Spanish, and I need to get some new tackle. We went through a lot of tackle today, had some break offs. I was using 30 test fluorocarbon. I also had some jigs that are all scraped up now, not quite this color that they were when we started. So I'm going to talk to Tex here, and Tex, if you will, tell me a little bit about some of these jigs you and I were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. uh, recommending, you know, some jigs and some of the trolling jigs that we were talking about, you know, when the fish start going down, we start using some stuff for trolling. So right. just show me a little bit about what you got here at the store. Here. Well, what we got here is Blue Water Candy um, brand. We have different models of some of the Spanish mackerel <coughs> lures that they make. Uh, number one here is a Spanish bird, um, and it's just a topwater lure that skips along on top of the water, and you can tie a Clark spoon behind it. You can tie a little one of their Spanish mackerel um, squids behind it, uh, but you don't want to put anything real heavy behind it because it'll keep the bird from not working properly. So the main thing is it just goes across top of the water, emulating a uh, school of bait fish trying to get away from a bigger fish. Uh, another thing we have here <clears throat> is blue water candy slingshots. And one thing to notice, there's different sizes and they all have gold hooks. The gold hooks are important for Spanish mackerel on any lure. Uh, it, the, the gold hook seems to do uh, just catch Spanish mackerel better. If you were going to want to target bluefish, you could always just take that off and put a silver hook. Mm -hmm. And the silver hook seems to target the bluefish a little better. Um, as you can see, it's basically, this is a diamond jig with a skirt over the top of it. And what the skirt does is make it look a little more like a glass minnow when you're jigging it or skipping it across the top of the water mm -hmm. like a glass minnow might be. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then, of course, there's different colors and different sizes. Uh, as you know, there are certain days that color does make a difference. Uh, you see it in your trolling stuff, your topwater stuff, even your, your uh, stuff that you're vertical jigging. Uh, different light conditions dictate different colors some days. Um, and then this is called a double shot. And it's also made by Blue Water Candy. And I'll flip that around. And what it is is a slingshot with an extra, it's a double rig. So as you're jigging it, you've got like this glass minnow going along with your jig. So sometimes you get a bite, bite on this, sometimes you get a bite on that, sometimes you get a bite on both. And uh, the beauty of it is you're fishing two hooks at the same time. And it's kind of mimics a small school of, of minnows. I like that that top one is weightless text. I mean, it's gonna give a lot of lifelike action here on mm -hmm. top. And this bottom 
jig is acting almost like a sinker, but it's also a jig, you know, with a hook on it. So like you said, you can double up on Spanish, which yeah. when you get a school come through, especially if you're on the pier, right. you want to catch as many as possible when they come mm -hmm. through because you might not see them again that day. That's right. And here lately, there's been a really good Spanish bite uh, from the beach on out several miles and the guys on the piers and the guys on the boat have been doing very well. Uh, one thing, as you mentioned, this acts as, a, as your weight. So if you're casting it, this is your weight. And But whenever you jig it, each time that you jig, this minnow is going to go kind of go straight along with the leader. And then as this sinks, this is going to flutter back up and come straight down like that. Yeah. So that it looks kind of like a minnow trying to get back to the bottom or something like that. Yeah. Another thing I noticed on these jigs, on these blue water candy jigs, is you've got a split ring here that holds the hook on. So if you, you know, all of us are aware that salt water eats up about everything, especially hooks. So we have to change our hooks out all the time. You can easily change these hooks out with a pair of split ring pliers. And I'm sure Tex has the same hook sitting on a shelf somewhere over there. I've got some that are very similar. Yes. Very similar. So. It, you know, this is an easy jig. I mean, this is not going to rust up here. This is a stainless eye, and also this is a, a lead jig. So the only thing that's really going to corrode is the hook. So you can change these off when they get rusted. Mm -hmm. So I do like that. It looks like every one of these Blue Water Candy, the slingshot jigs are the same way. Uh, just replace those hooks after you go fishing if they get a little corroded. And uh, it's just like having a new jig. Mm -hmm. And Randy, this is a... Um this is another rig that's made by Blue Water Candy. It's called the Spanish Daisy. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it comes in several colors, but as you can see, we have three squids and it has, all of them have gold hooks. And as I said before, the gold hooks seem to be very important for Spanish fishing. Mm -hmm. But this rig is best trolled. It doesn't weigh much, so you can't really cast it very well. And if you do cast it, it's probably gonna tangle up. Yeah. But the way to fish this is you tie it on one of your trolling rods or even a small spinning rod, mm -hmm. and you let it pretty far behind your boat past everything else. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, this thing is just gonna be dragging in the water, not having any commotion whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So you start slowly reeling it in, and then all of a sudden you're gonna reach a point with the angle of your line, the boat speed, that these front two squids are gonna start dancing around. Mm -hmm. And this one kind of stabilizes everything, but these front two start dancing around, and right there is how you wanna fish it. If, okay. you, if you bring it in any further than that, this won't have enough weight or resistance in the water and the whole thing will start flying out of the water. Gotcha. But this one, as you can see, is a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And that's one reason why you just want the front two to kind of start skipping around. Gotcha. And it looks like little glass minnows going like this. Gotcha. Pretty neat little rig. That is pretty neat. So, you know, that, that would go along with the bird far as using something on top. You know, we have another <clears throat> presentation for fish that might be feeding on top like they have been lately. Yeah. It's been a lot of surfacing fish around, like you yeah. said, around Wrightsville, Masonburg, even Topsail Island. Mm -hmm. We were out yesterday and there was just thousands of them off yeah. Masonburg Island. So um, that's one trick that we need to try next trip. I did not try it on this, this trip we had today, but uh, we will definitely be trying that the next time we go out for Spanish mackerel. And man, I appreciate the uh, the lesson on these blue water candy lures. I can't wait to get them in the water and, and try them next time. And mm -hmm. I appreciate you going over yes, sir. all this stuff with us, Tex. Yeah, and uh, like I say, it's a great way to fish and it's a local company and they make a great product. Definitely do, yep. good people. I'm telling you, I look like reds on top of that rock right here. It was. Red, sight fish. That's how you do it right there, brother. I sight fish that suck on that rock. Nice upper slot red fish. That's what we saw shine. Well, I told you, I just saw a fish sitting on those rocks. That's a slot redfish. <laughs> I don't hardly ever get slots out here. Almost always over slot. And who's ever caught him on a jig up here? I jig him out there, but not up here. That's pretty cool. Really cool. Redfish jigging.
Yeah, that's cool. Pretty fish. You don't get many red fish jigging and you certainly don't sight fish very many fish on the jetties but i saw that fish on top of the rocks pitched a jig to him we were jigging and he ate that jig so that's really cool uh, just one more thing that you can learn on a day of fishing that you might not have ever done before so let's get back to it i want to try that again I tell you, I saw that fish sitting right on the rock. This is the second fish that I have sight jet casted to on the jetties. A first for me, guys. I mean, I'm a sight fisherman. I fish the flats from here to Texas and everywhere in between. But I've never sight fished the jetties in my own waters until today. These fish are sitting right on top of the rock. Never seen anything like that. I jig them deep with soft plastic, category fives and, and uh, other baits, but the first fish, I was jigging off the bottom, I saw a fish on the rocks and pitched a metal jig and he ate. And then I grabbed one of my category fives on a uh, high strike fishing jig head and I, I sight fished a fish that was sitting on the rocks, very next cast, and caught another upper slot red fish right here. Pretty fish. All right, let's keep taking it out. Get it. Look at that. It's bigger than the last one. Look at that fish. I'm finding out what's going on out here at the jetties today. I just saw a school of porpoises come in before I popped the last two fish on top. I saw these fish in a foot of water on top of the rocks here at the jetties. And we've got porpoises out here beside us right now. I think what's happening is these porpoises have come in and these redfish are scared of the porpoises. So they're taking cover in between the shallow rocks coming up top, which I never see it this jetty. I've seen it down in Destin in the Panhandle, uh, Perdido and places like that um, down in Florida, but I've never seen that here in North Carolina. So it's a pretty rare situation that I'm enjoying right now and I think that's the secret to why I'm seeing fish sitting so shallow around the jetties today. I saw it. And back on that rock again. Man, that's really cool. I didn't get that fish, but I pitched a piece of metal again right in front of a redfish and watched him follow this piece of metal. If he wasn't so chewed up from all the Spanish he caught this morning, maybe he would have hit. I don't know, I'm gonna try to get a little, uh, a little more technical on it. I'm gonna use, at least use a soft plastic now. There he is again. Another one. We're right off the same rock. I just got the last one off there. I just missed one with a metal jig. I picked up a soft plastic, put it in there. Sure enough, another red fish. Man, in 
fish. Typical winter redfish, they'll get these gross on them, little parasites, and then they'll get algae on top of the parasite. As soon as the warm weather comes, it usually shed all this stuff. Another pretty red right there. Pretty red. Nice upper slot. Good size tournament fish in North Carolina. About a 26 incher. Tournament. I can handle them. Another pretty fish. That's the size you want if you fish in the tournament in North Carolina. Good 27 inch fish. Let's get him back in the water and get another one. another light tackle jetty redfish a pretty uncommon way to catch redfish on the jetties here in North Carolina so with that being said let's go over there and try to get another one it's a windy day we've been offshore catching Spanish mackerel bluefish looking for bonita it's gotten too windy so we just stopped by here on the jetties coming in and got on a pretty good redfish bite. That's what I'm talking about, Billy. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, zoom in. Five plus. That's target species right there. The one eyed pin. Hey guys, we're here on the Northeast Cape Fear River. It's beautiful out here. We're surrounded by cypress trees and all sorts of wildlife here at River Bluffs. And right now we're standing on the, what they call the River Walk, which is a 180 boat slip dock here in the neighborhood. So if you live out here in the neighborhood, there's plenty of dock space for your boat and I can't tell you how pretty it is in this part of the river. I think we talked about this in a previous episode when we were striper fishing right near this neighborhood here in River Bluffs and catching striper within sight of this dock, but the water here is just beautiful. It's tannic, it's not crystal clear, but it's clean. Main Cape Fear River is silty, but up here on this northeast branch, it's very tannic and clear actually on the edges. You can actually see the bottom and uh, we just walked out here on the dock and saw fiddler crabs walking in the sand. It's actually sandy banks, very high bluffs, which is why I guess they call it river bluffs. But um, you got beautiful views here right around this marina area and this, this boardwalk. Uh, so come on out to river bluffs and check out the facilities they have out here. Uh, they also have a boat ramp. So if you want to trailer your boat, you got a smaller boat and you just want to put it in the water and go fishing that day they've got a boat ramp for your small boat as well they got a beautiful gazebo here one on each end of this river walk it's almost a half a mile long so come on out and and take a look at river bluffs and if you're thinking about buying a, a house in a river front community this place is awesome it's got a great restaurant great marina facilities are awesome they've got pools tennis courts you name it so uh, come on out and experience River Bluffs for yourself and come check out this beautiful area on the river where it's located.